cruise news time. Well, has, has Carnival Cruise Line, have they given in to the pressure? Uh, new policy change uh, suggests maybe. Also, uh, what about those folks that were stranded in Grand Turk? Ha have those impacted by the ship fire on the Carnival Freedom? Have they made it home? And uh, what about Australia? Today's a big day for Australia. And look, there's more. I also want to talk about uh, which cruise line should you go on first? If you had a friend that said, which cruise line should I go on first? How would you direct them? And I got a particular, I got, I think the most important question I would ask a friend asking me that question. Uh, cruise news. Let's talk about it. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony. I'm your guide for all things cruising. If you're looking for cruise information, you come to the right place. Jam-packed show today. Cruise news, a cruise topic, and uh, really I've got a special thing for you. A game, as it were. How sharp are you? How, how uh, observational are you? We're going to play that game just in a bit. But first, let's get into the cruise news. First big cruise news headline, Carnival changes their policy when it comes to drones. That's right, just uh, within the last 10 days, they came out and said, no drones allowed. You guys remember that, Charlie Brown? No drones allowed. And I don't know if there was a big backlash, certainly in the comments of the video I put out, people were like, ah, dang it, I would like to take my drone. They've amended the policy. Now, of course, the use of drones on the cruise ship still prohibited, but they weren't even going to let you bring your drone on board. Now you can bring your drone on board. You have to check it in with the security officer, and then you have to check it out at ports of call. So they're going to hold it for you. Let me hold a dollar. They're going to let me hold your drone. Uh, that's the way the process is going to work. And, and that is better for people that like to do drone photography, drone videography. At least they can bring their drone on board. Uh, of course, I'd be careful. I wouldn't try to sneak my drone on board. If you put it in your check luggage, they're going to find it in the x-ray machine. They're going to take your drone. They're probably going to take it from you if you don't check it in uh, during the check-in process. So uh, yes, uh, drone enthusiasts, you can take your drone back on board Carnival. Uh, the ban was short-lived uh, and amended, which is good. So maybe they heard the voice of the people and said, okay, maybe we need a better policy where we can possibly let people bring their drones on board. Uh, but uh, how do we keep it more secure so that we don't have people uh, flying drones around the cruise ship? And uh, there you go. So how about that? Another big carnival story in your face is the whole saga of the carnival freedom. If you remember last week, the whale tail uh, caught on fire. Uh, it went ablaze. And there was enough damage to that cruise ship that it ended the cruises on the Carnival Freedom. And Carnival made the decision to bring in another cruise ship, the Carnival Conquest, uh, to ferry those people from Grand Turk back to Port Canaveral. There was some uh, controversy, some discussion, some debate, as it were, uh, whether or not Carnival should have flown all those people there. Uh, was it a monetary issue? Here's the, here's the thing I didn't hear talked about a whole lot. I threw this out on the Twitter the other day. If you're not following La Lita Loca on Twitter, I've started to ask more questions there, trying to get more engaged in that community. So if you're a Twitter user, uh, make sure you follow La Lita Loca on uh, Twitter. Uh, it's all jammed together, La Lita Loca. And uh, I asked the question, why do you think they didn't fly people home? The thing that sticks in my mind, maybe there are a lot of people on the Freedom that weren't traveling with passports. That would certainly impact the whether or not to fly people home decision if a large majority of the people on that cruise ship uh, weren't traveling with a passport. If you don't have a passport, you can't fly home. So maybe the ship was the best option. But what do you think? Do you think Carnival should have flown people home who could have flown home? Or do you think that the Conquest... Look, two more days in Grand Turk. I've heard a lot of people in the comments saying it was great. It was fantastic. You got to, you know, of course, had to rearrange travel and your work schedule, all that kind of stuff. I know Carnival was giving money for flights, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, which would you have preferred if you were stuck in Grand Turk? Would you have liked the flight home or would you have liked to be ferried home on the Conquest? And then the, the bookend on that is that the Conquest did bring those people back to Port Canaveral yesterday. And so at least for all of those people that were on the ship that the fire was on, uh, that that uh, that chapter has ended. But there's still going to be more to that story. The Freedom now in dry dock in Grand Bahama getting its funnel repaired or whatever repairs need to be done. And then, uh, of course, the Conquest, I think it kicked off back on its regular schedule after it dropped the people off yesterday. So uh, that's going forward. Cruise news story number three. This time, let's talk about Holland America Line uh, with really a cool synergistic event happening just yesterday. The new MS Rotterdam was christened to be the MS Rotterdam 
in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. How about that? That's kind of cool. Uh, you know, all that uh, coolness stacked on top of each other. They christened the cruise ship. The cruise ship's been in service for possibly like seven months, but uh, that's the way it works sometimes. These naming ceremonies, these christening ceremonies, they don't actually happen right when the cruise ship starts sailing. And so after seven months, the new MS Rotterdam is now officially christened as the MS Rotterdam. I think that's the fifth version of the Rotterdam. Holland America is one of those that uh, when they take a ship out of service, they don't necessarily take the name out of service. They don't retire it like the number 23 in basketball bonus points that's an easy one who's number 23 uh, who was number four for the yankees how about that uh okay i'm not much of a sports guy but i do know some of those numbers in my head but the ms rotterdam not retired the name uh new ship christened our friend don Terris was over there for the naming ceremony our friend doug parker was over there for the naming ceremony uh big shout out to those guys uh and uh yeah hope they're having a good time across the ocean we walked on the ocean Whoo, what is it? It's Tuesday morning. We got a live show tonight. Uh, one more cruise news story. This one's important. Today is the day that our friends in Australia have been waiting for. This is the 31st of May and the Pacific Explorer is going cruising. Going cruising in Australia. After two years, the major cruise lines have returned to service in Australia Whew, that's, I tell you, for cruisers down there, for people in the cruise family down there, that's got to be a relief. Uh, we'll be watching, make sure everything goes okay down there. But congratulations to Australia for coming back online. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to some sort of normalcy. We still have a ways to go. We've talked about it before. The cruise restart kind of like a dripping faucet, drip, 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 and then a, a better stream, a smaller. Eventually, that faucet's going to be wide open. Cruising's going to be back. Uh, maybe we're halfway there. I don't know. There's still a lot going on, still a lot of challenges, still a lot of uh, bumps in the road, uh, but we're seeing more and more cruising happening uh, as we go forward. Remember, we're trying to recover from an 18-month valley that cruising went through, and so uh, it's not like you're going to flip a switch and everything's going to be back to the way it was. Uh, it's going to be a slow a slow journey back up the mountain, but we are getting there, and uh, I, for one, am quite excited. Now, I do have an interesting cruise game that I want to play with you guys at the end, but I also have a cruise topic today. Uh, we're going to move to that section of the show, but first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you'd like to stay up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes, and that way you get to be part of the Notification Squad. Shout out to the Notification Squad. Shout out to all the squad leaders. Have you been a squad leader yet? All you gotta do is leave the first comment. None of this costs any money. It helps the channel be exposed to YouTube, and uh, yeah, it keeps you in the know. So uh, there's a lot of going on there with the value proposition. Subscribe, notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Okay, let's uh, let's do the topic real quick. I put this out on Twitter. Uh, which cruise line would you recommend as the first cruise line for somebody to go on? I just left it that generic, and quickly I got hit with a lot of responses like, well, that's not enough information. You got to know what the person is interested in before you could recommend a cruise line. I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. So let's let's even go deeper in the conversation today. Your friend comes up to you. They know that you're a cruiser and they say, hey, friend, I would like to go on my very first cruise. Which cruise line should I go on? How do you answer that question? Now, you know, we know this from uh, having the travel business that you should answer that question with a question. So I'm trying to figure out what the most important question or questions are. Uh, the first question I would ask that person is, what do you like to do while you're on vacation? The do is the important to me. Do you like to, to dance? Do you like to drink? Do you like to gamble? Do you like to go to shows? Do you like to chill? Do you like to read? Do you? That would be, to me, that's how you start building out the first time cruiser profile. Then a secondary question to me is, where do you want to go? Uh, where you want to go is an important question for a lot of people. Sometimes even the, the ship, the do is secondary. For me, the do is primary. Uh, and the where you go is secondary. And then third for me is what does it cost, right? Because I, there's a lot of uh, comparable costs across many cruise lines. So you're not necessarily going to be uh, limited by cost. You should be able at the lowest price point, find uh, one or two options or three options. And then at the middle price point, you know, three or four options, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I think those would be the three main questions. What do you want to do primary? Where do you want to go secondary? Uh, what do you want to pay would be tertiary third. Uh, is that the same order or is there a question that I'm missing? Let's have that conversation. How would you answer the question for a friend uh, or an enemy? No. How would you answer that question for a friend? Uh, which cruise line should you go on first? 
leave a comment below. All right, ready to play an observational game? I took this little section of footage uh, at the, well, bonus points. What port is this? I took this recently, and uh, I was just struck by how many things were going on uh, in this just little clip like so that's what I want you to do uh, pause or watch it a couple times and then make a comment how many things do you think are going on and then I'm going to tell you the things that I see going on and maybe you'll you'll even see I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a lot that goes on during the disembarkation uh, re-embarkation process of a cruise ship and a lot of it's captured just in this little snippet of footage uh, take a close look I can name at least four things that are that's going on, maybe more. I'll play the clip one more time. Here it is again. And okay, and here's what I see. First and foremost, there's a there's an ambulance on the uh, the pier there. I didn't watch it long enough to see what was happening. I assume that somebody was getting uh, taken off the cruise ship in the ambulance. That's number one. Uh, number two is they're loading new provisions onto the cruise ship and taking off uh, old stuff. So we'll count that as uh, one thing. So ambulance one, reprovisioning number two. Number three, there is the luggage dolly, the luggage cart taking luggage over to that big dome. D do you guys know what that dome was for? That's another bonus that this wasn't always a cruise terminal. That's the cruise terminal, but it used to have another use. So that's number three, luggage dollying. And then number four, if you look really close, you can see the people exiting the cruise ship. There's people walking across the gangway. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing stuff there, but right there, just in that one little snippet, you've got reprovisioning, you've got a medical evacuation, you've got luggage going to the terminal, and you have people disembarking the cruise ship. Um, I, I, it just hit me that there was a lot going on uh, during disembarkation that maybe I don't even think about. Uh, did you get all four of those? Was there something that I was missing there? Uh, number five was a cool dude was filming it. How about that? <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> Boom! That's your cruise news. I hope you enjoyed the show today. You can show your support for the show by hitting the like button. And unfortunately, if you do not hit the like button, well, your your luggage will not make it onto that little luggage carrier, and uh, your your suitcase will be going on a back to back cruise without you on your next cruise. You don't want that because you need your you need your stuff. Don't we all need our stuff? Uh, hit the like button. You can avoid all that. Thanks so much again. This is Tony for Loudly the Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.